is on you. And Fonnie Willis has left the courtroom, at least for today. Court is going to end now. This has been a marathon day. We're going to take you through it a little bit. We all have opinions. Let's start with the judge because this started earlier today. I didn't think it would be, well, I don't know. I'm totally into this story, <laughs> but I didn't even know it would be like this on the witness stand. It started slow at 10. But it picked up a lot of steam. I got to tell you, Dana, everybody I've spoken with has been glued to this. This is a combination of, of, of a real courtroom, but also a soap opera with characters and with explosions that you don't usually see in courtrooms. So let me let me start by saying that uh, Vonnie Willis is out of control. All right. No judge would tolerate what she did in that courtroom. I don't know why this one did, but any judge that I appeared before trying a case would have held me in contempt if I acted Why? that way. She was condescending. She was out of control. She was combative. She was uh, gratuitous. She was lecturing. She yelled at the attorney and said, don't you yell at me. And, you know, the attorney wasn't yelling, but she was yelling at the attorney. And she literally thought that this was her show, that she was running the courtroom, and that, you know, all of these issues, everybody had to be lectured. If she was asked a question, you know, did you keep cash and trying to assess, the real issue here is whether or not there were misconduct allegations that can lead to her being disqualified. Qualified. Those misconduct allegations include, number one, did she have an affair with a guy before she hired him? And what has come out is that she hired him in November of 2022, and the affair started in early 2023. So I guess a few weeks after they took a look at each other, they decided they were going to have sex together. But the truth is that it's more than that. Was she partaking of trips that literally she was indirectly paying for? Right. And when it got to the point where she had to prove that she was, in fact, reimbursing uh, Mr. Wade for these trips, she couldn't have any proof. She didn't have any. She said she went to Belize with cash. I mean, who goes to Belize <laughs> with cash? And then finally, um, she said that she never received a gift with an aggregate of over $100. What she's got to worry about is not so much her reputation, because she's outraged. She's got to worry about the reputation of her office. That DA's office has a stink on it now. Did she hire someone that she brought in because she wanted to have a relationship with him? Did she spend... And by the way, how do you go on five trips as a DA in six months? I mean, from Belize to the Bahamas to Aruba to uh, mm. Miami at the Napa Valley. I mean, who's running the DA's office? Nobody has time to do this. She was out of control, but the in the in the end, I think she started understanding that it wasn't her show. She had to calm herself. So it was, we went on for hours, and this is one key part. If, if control room, can you get intro shot number four ready? And I'll ask Jesse about this because there's been a lot of questions. If you turned in late, tuned in late. There was all of these questions about money and cash and how much she paid. And she says she paid her fair share, et cetera. But this was a moment today where you thought, oh, there could be trouble. Watch. I've given him cash only a few times in life, probably four. Okay. Probably the most money I've ever handed him is $2,500. You have no proof of any reimbursement for any of these things because it was all cash, right? The testimony of one witness is enough to prove a fact. The only money you've ever given him outside of a contract is cash. I didn't give him money in a contract, so that was cute, but I didn't give him money out uh, in a contract. His money back. I don't need anybody to foot my bills. The only man who's ever foot my bills completely is my daddy. You've been watching all day. You love it. I don't even know where to start, Dana. I'm so engaged in this courtroom drama. So many things I want to say at once. I just, I don't know if we're going to have enough time. We are covering this for the whole hour. Is that correct? <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I can promise that. Can we please that. cover this for the whole hour? <laughs> just start. First of all, it must be exhausting to prosecute Trump because this woman's taken seven vacations. <laughs> <of the year. laughs> My favorite part was when she was asked if she's ever been to any other continents mm -hmm. with Wade. And she said, well, I've been to Belize. Is, what continent is Belize? Mm -hmm. Belize is North America, Central Lady America. Belize. This woman is prosecuting the former president of the United <laughs> States. She flies to a country and doesn't know what continent it's on. That's just number one. These are not smart or professional people. These are petty people that all of a sudden everyone's looking at. And 
and their dirty laundry is totally exposed. Her friend, Dana, for 30 years, sorority sisters, she moved into this woman's condo. She hired her to work in her office. Her friend testified that she saw her kissing and cuddling and holding hands. Just right there alone, direct witness testimony should sink her because you're not allowed to hire the person you're having sex with and then not disclose it mm -hmm. and then pay him a bunch of money and then he takes you on vacation and you claim you gave him cash. She says she's keeping lots of cash in her house. Would the top law enforcement official in Fulton County announced to the entire world, hey, everybody in Atlanta, <laughs> I keep lots of cash in my apartment. <laughs> it's, it doesn't even add up, Dana. And then when they say, well, where'd you get the cash from? She goes, blood, sweat, and tears. Hard work. Well, do you have any withdrawal slips from the bank? No, she's been accumulating a cash hoard for many years. She thought the guy said whore. Yes, she that did. was one of yeah. my favorite parts. I mean, I could go on for hours and, he said, and hours. And he said I would never say that. About this case, so much to say. Can I ask the call, uh, control room for call for number one? This is the friend revealing the relationship. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. It, it is a lie. It is, it is, it is a lie. Well, Mr. Sena, thank you. We're going to take five minutes. All right, that wasn't the one I wanted, but you get the <laughs> picture of how it went, Greg. Yeah, I think The View found a backup host. I mean, the <laughs> amount of nonsense she can unload matches all of them combined. I'm like the judge. I didn't know you could be this combative and belligerent. I mean, that's okay, I guess. I mean, do, do the, does the average guy get the same uh, leeway to do that? I mean, why are they so hands off? I'd really like to know. It, I, I'm telling you, man, that was, it was exhausting. I felt like I was on, I was trapped with a combative customer service rep from a rental car agency who was battling me on everything. Like, I said that I wanted a, I wanted a four-door. No, we're out of two. <laughs> Did you say that? No, we only have two doors, but I, I, I'm pretty sure I said convertible. We don't have any convertibles. Are you saying I'm lying? It was, I, I yeah. just, it, it was, she was amazing. She was trying to flood the zone with a barrage of frantic words, asides and tangents. It was like listening to a shoplifter tell a cop her life story when he's just asking her, <laughs> did you put a Snickers bar in your purse? I mean, I, I, I guess she's like hoping that people will forget what the case is about as long as you keep building and building this nonsense. Instead of digging a bigger hole, you dig a bunch of little holes over here and hope people just fall in. And it just got after a while. I, I couldn't handle it. I mean, it is weird, though, that this person is a D.A. and not just a D.A., but you know, presiding over probably one of the biggest trials, yes, yep. you know, uh, it's, a, it's a president on trial and, and that's the person in charge. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that is not, that's not an even keeled person. Uh, I, I, I think that I, I originally would think that she was, you know, maybe she felt like the jury would identify with her, but there's no jury, mm -hmm. right? So all I can just think of is she's auditioning for the view. She knows she's going to be impeached or whatever you call it. And this is like her next gig because, man, she doesn't need a script. She I wanna, can just go. I want to ask you to do call for shot number two. That's on the second part of the page. This is the MSNBC host saying that she's in a lot of trouble. Watch. This is epic. This is monumental. If things are going in the direction we think, uh, Fonnie Willis lied to the court, it's game over for her. She will be disqualified. Not to watch a Bravo Housewives episode or about salacious details about a romance. So I don't think this is a good day for the state. Which means, Jessica, it's a good day for President Trump. Yeah. And this, this case, well, we'll get to the judge on this in a moment, but it looks like it's not going well for Fonnie Willis or... And you've got to imagine all of those other defendants are thinking this case could get thrown out. I'm not sure. I'll let the judge comment on whether this could end up in it being thrown out. The Trump team and what they are happy about is it, it would mean if she was disqualified, it's another delay. All he's trying to do is delay everything. And he was in court in New York today, right, trying to get the Alvin Bragg case delayed. And that seems like it'll go forward on March 25th. 
The thing is, nobody cares about the Alvin Bragg case. What they do care about is this case and the election interference case that Jack Smith is bringing and the documents. Mm -hmm. So um, I agree with what is with much of what has been said. I think that there were some moments where she had legitimate reason to be upset um, when she was holding up the document saying you lied in here. The lawyer had lied and put in the documentation that uh, Nathan Wade had spent time in her condo in South Fulton in 2021. She said that's not true, and that that's where the disagreement with the friend is. Their relationship hadn't started well, until 2022. It doesn't mean it's a lie. The finder well, of facts determines whether that's a lie. It, she doesn't determine. Right. It. Okay. She was refuting testimony that had come from her former friend. Obviously, something very bad happened in that falling out. And from that particular... Yeah, and uh, in fact, Willis at one point says, I have not spoken to Robin in over a year. I certainly do not consider her a friend right. now. Judge, can I l have you listen well, to What is a friend? I mean, is it a personal <laughs> friend? Is it a romantic yeah, friend? That's right. Romantic. <laughs> have I ever paid you cash? Yeah. Yeah. Let me can think I about that. Okay, I just, want, we, okay. Uh, I just want to get to this part because it's about democracy, right? So this yes. is Willis talking about democracy. This is yes. your call for number four. Well, I'm very much want to be here, so I'm not a hostile witness. I very much want to be not here. Not so much that you're hostile, Ms. Willis. It'd be an adverse witness. Your interests are opposed to Ms. Merchant's. Thank Ms. Merchant's interests are, per are contra contrary to democracy, Your Honor, not to mine. Okay. Mm -hmm. If that isn't a political answer, and first of all, it appears she doesn't understand the difference between a hostile and an adverse witness. She is a hostile witness. The way she approached that, that chair, I've never seen anything like it. But more than that, she is an adverse witness legally, which allows cross-examination of her based upon the fact that her interests are contrary to Ms. Marchin. Ms. Marchin's papers included affidavits from individuals who swore to tell the truth. So an affidavit is something where if if you don't say the truth, you can be punished for it. So she comes out as though, again, she's running the courtroom. That's a lie. No, you refute it. You say it's a lie, but that's not up to you. And she says, I'm not hostile. You're number one, as hostile as you can get body language wise. And number two, you are as adverse as any witness in a criminal courtroom. And when she says, I'm not hostile, or she says, that's an inaccurate way for you to ask me a question. Since when are you the judge? Right. And that the judge let her get away with this. I've lost respect. I want to give Jesse one more chance, but can you get, can you have Jesse respond to call for number three? You haven't seen testimony yet during this roundup from Nathan Wade himself. This is about the ATM. You don't have a single solitary deposit slip to corroborate or support any of your allegations that you were paid by Mrs. Willis in cash, do you? No, sir. Not a single solitary one. Not a one. Not a one. Well, I mean, if you're paid in cash, you spend the cash, Dana. But someone's got to have a withdrawal slip. <laughs> it's only Fanny. But remember, you can't ask her those questions. She's had that hoard for at least 10 years. I want to talk about Nathan Wade, may I? Nathan Wade said it's not unusual for clients to come to his law firm and pay large sums of cash. Bravo. What kind of law firm? accepts large sums of cash from clients. That kind of guy is prosecuting the president of the United States, a personal injury attorney that takes cash payments, no questions asked. Are you kidding me? Also, how about this? This is how Wade does business. Wade puts everything he spends his money on on his corporate card. Yes, yes. And then it at the separate. end of the year, he gives the statement to his tax attorney and the tax attorney divides what was business and what was personal and then they file their taxes. I have never, ever heard of anybody doing that at all. Also funny from Wade, Wade, at this point he's not supposed to be sleeping with Fanny. He's going oh. to her condo and this is when she's very lonely, and he's just picking her up, and they're going to dinner at Lickety Splits. Or Mellow Mushroom. Or Mellow Mushroom. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes he's going to his, her condo, and they're reviewing documents. documents. Has anybody else from the legal team gone to Fanny's <laughs> condo to review documents? Absolutely not. Yeah. This would be like, I don't know, Robert Mueller appointing Andrew Weissman to work on his team. They're screwing. 
And then he hands Weissman $40 million, which they're supposed to investigate Donald Trump with. And Weissman takes Mueller to Belize, <laughs> to Napa, and to Aruba. And when everybody asks questions, Mueller says, oh, I just paid him back in cash because I keep large stacks of cash in the house. And I'm not going to show you my withdrawal slips. This doesn't add up, Jessica. This Jessica, does not add I, up. I can tell you're frustrated. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, I, I'm so, my mind has been so boggled by <laughs> Mueller and Weissman away on a romantic <laughs> vacation not, and also getting paid $40 million. There's wrong with that. No, 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 of course not. Um, absolutely. I was actually, uh, I found that refreshing that you use that yeah. as an analogy. Yeah. I thought I was yeah, very open right, Indeed. <laughs> He's equal opportunity ridiculous. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are we taking a break? Or are we, no, 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 Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.